What is going on everyone, Jason here, and today we're taking a look at the very popular iPhone 12. It's been a month since I first picked this phone up, and I have to say, it's honestly been the iPhone that I've reached for the least, out of all four launched back in November. And I think the main reason for that is because it doesn't have the same novelties as say the iPhone 12 mini or the Pro Max, and in many ways, it's probably the most vanilla option this year. Now that's not to say that the iPhone 12 is a bad phone, in fact, one month later, I'm convinced that this is the most logical choice iPhone for majority of consumers out there. So today I'm going to talk about how my experience has been using the iPhone 12 for a month in case you're thinking about upgrading this year and want to know if it's the right fit for you. Now before we jump into this review, if you're new here, I'm basically the guy who tests out the newest and most popular tech out there before you buy them to make sure that you're informed and don't make any purchasing mistakes. That said, would really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up, it really helps me out. And of course, if you want to stay up to date with all the coolest tech devices and toys, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on anything. Now I'm going to start with how my experience has been with the iPhone 12 size and form factor. Without a doubt, it's a big improvement from last year's iPhone 11, as the dimensions of the phone have gotten smaller, making it more feasible to use with one hand. Now, Apple was able to accomplish this while still using the premium build materials iPhones are known for, in a manner that also makes for better ergonomics. The flattened frame makes the iPhone 12 a lot easier to hold, and it gives the phone a more sophisticated, mature look. The matte finish on the aluminum is nice because it doesn't attract a ton of fingerprints, and though the glossy panel on the back does provide good contrast and honestly better grip, it's almost impossible to keep clean for longer than two seconds. And I know that I've been pretty vocal this year about the iPhone 12 Pro and how much I love the design, and even though I will double down on saying that it is the best iPhone built to date, the iPhone 12 is right behind it. You gotta give credit where credit is due, and Apple's high standards for quality are clearly exemplified through this phone. It may not have the fancy stainless steel or frosted glass back panel, but if I'm keeping it 100 here, if you put a case on your phone, which you should for both the 12 and 12 Pro, they're virtually indecipherable. And one of the main reasons why is because unlike last year, the 12 and the 12 Pro have the exact same display. Now this is a much bigger deal for the iPhone 12, as it is the predecessor to the iPhone 11, a phone that was universally praised for almost everything, minus the sub 1080p LCD panel that it was equipped with. So for the iPhone 12 to now have an OLED display that is the same resolution and quality as the Pro model, in many ways the one component that clearly put the non-Pro model behind is completely rectified. Now I've never been one to bash on the older LCD displays Apple has used in the past. Yes, they were embarrassingly dated, but to me they still made for a great user experience. But after using the iPhone 12 for a month, there's no denying that the display is significantly better in virtually every way. It's the same size as the iPhone 11s, but on the smaller body, making it more immersive, you get way better contrast with those true blacks you're afforded on OLED, and everything from text to pictures in your album looks sharper and cleaner than before. Consuming HDR content is pretty fantastic, and the upgraded display really does make the iPhone 12 feel a lot more premium than its predecessor. Now the iPhone 11 was priced $100 cheaper when it first launched at $699, but to me, the extra 100 bucks is way worth it here. It's significantly a better piece of hardware, and it really is the glue that brings the entire design of this phone together. Now, another thing that I noticed with the iPhone 12 one month later is how well it performs. Yes, it is an iPhone, which means that it's almost expected to provide a seamless user experience for day-to-day -day phone usage, and it totally does. Apps open up quickly, UI navigation, as always, is buttery smooth, and there's never any stutter, even when using more dynamic apps. I've been doing a lot more gaming on my phone than before, and the iPhone 12 handles even the most spec-intensive games like a walk in the park, gameplay is smooth, I don't get any drop frames, and everything is super responsive. Battery life has also been pretty solid on this phone. I've been getting around seven and a half hours of screen on time, even on days of heavy usage. And it is nice having the same magnetic MagSafe charging capability like the other models. Now the strong performance isn't exactly mind bending as the iPhone 12 is rocking the new A14 Bionic chip, which like Apple processors before it, is crazy powerful and pretty much overkill. So again, performance in the areas just mentioned is now more of an expectation than it is something to boast about. Where the A14 really earns its stripes though, is in the iPhone 12's camera features. Apple has really stepped it up with camera quality on the newer iPhones, and it's mainly been accomplished through advanced computational photography. Terms like deep fusion and next generation smart HDR do sound like buzzwords, but the amount of data that the iPhone 12 is taking in in order to produce one photo is far more than what most consumers ever realize, and that's mainly because it does it so quickly. By the time you press the shutter and the image gets to your photo album, the iPhone 12 has shot in multiple frames, analyzed individual pixels on each of those frames to ID the best ones, and stitched all the best parts together for the highest quality image, all in a matter of seconds. And it starts to make way better sense why the pictures coming out of the iPhone 12 are so great. Everything is sharp without coming off overly processed, portrait mode selfies look outstanding, and to me the most natural when compared to other competitors, the dynamic range has seen noticeable improvements from last year, and Apple's night mode photos are getting better and better. 
Now, the processing power of the iPhone 12 is indeed impressive when it comes to still photography, but it's exponentially more so when dealing with video. And the 4K video that you're able to shoot on this phone continues to be the best on any smartphone, period. The front-facing camera can take incredible looking footage, particularly strong with dynamic range, and the stabilization is rock solid. The rear camera can shoot 4K video in 10-bit Dolby Vision HDR, which camera heads will recognize as ridiculous to have on a smartphone, and as to be expected, the quality of the footage here is outstanding. Colors are vibrant and full, the stabilization again is best in class, the dynamic range is so good, even when shooting in challenging environments like directly into the sun, I'm seriously left scratching my head at the magic that's going on behind the curtain when it comes to the image processing here. And after a month of using the iPhone 12 and comparing it to many other flagship phones launched in 2020, I could comfortably say that the camera suite offered is probably the best at this price point. As a whole, all the camera features on the 12 are really good, giving end users stellar photos and video quality in the simplest and most consistent manner possible. And you know, I would extend that sentiment generally to how I feel about the iPhone 12 overall. It may not have the most attention-grabbing bells and whistles, but the phone offers a ton and does everything really well. The design is on point, the display is a major leap forward from last year's model, and it's closer than ever to the more expensive Pro model that in my opinion really doesn't offer too much more. I've tried really hard to think about what are the limitations that the iPhone 12 has, and honestly, one month later, I can't really think of much. Okay, that's about it for this review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys find it useful. Again, I'd really appreciate it. Check out these reviews of the iPhone 12 Pro and the 12 mini if you're looking for more. Let me know what your thoughts are below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.